All right, we have a brief announcement from our interpreter. Good evening, buenas noches. This is a brief announcement in English and Spanish. This is un breve informe, in English, un anuncio, breve anuncio en inglés y en español. Um, we had a little tech issue earlier tonight, so we will not have interpretation in English and in Spanish this evening. Tuvimos una falla tecnológica. Hang on. Tuvimos una falla tecnológica uh, hace unos minutos y no vamos a poder proporcionar interpretación en inglés y en español hoy en la noche. Entonces nos disculpamos. So we do apologize, but we hope you have a, we're going to fix the issue for the next go around. So we'll have it available. Lo vamos a arreglar para la próxima uh, no, uh, noche donde uno cocina para uh, que tengan disponibilidad en, es, en interpretación en español. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you, Pablo. All right, so we are going to get started. We might have a few more people coming in, but we're going to go ahead and start. So I just want to say thank you again for joining us tonight, this spring evening, for our fourth and final district-wide virtual cooking night this school year, which is so, so crazy. We're already here. It's already almost May. Um, this series of four virtual cooking nights has really given me a lot of joy this past year something to look forward to every month. And it's been so wonderful to see all of your faces and families and kitchens and to gather together to cook, even while we're physically apart as a Durham Public Schools community. So just wanna say that and say that you can stay tuned for more cooking programming next year. Um, so my name is Hannah Ball Damberg. I am a farm educator at the Durham Public Schools Hub Farm. Um, which is a 30-acre Durham Public School property located next door to Eno Valley Elementary in North Durham. And we engage DPS students there in outdoor learning. So we would love for you to come visit if you haven't already. Um, and I am joined by my colleague tonight, Chef Peter Brodsky of the Northern High School Culinary Arts Department. So the Hub Farm and Northern Culinary have partnered for the last three years on farm-to-table projects. Um, culinary arts students work on semester-long projects to crop plan, plant, tend to, and ultimately harvest vegetables at the Hub Farm and serve them in dinners to teachers, the Board of Education, and more. So as a response to COVID-19, Chef Brodsky and I have shifted this partnership online, and we teach a virtual cooking class every week now. Students receive a bag of produce from the Hub Farm, and then and Chef Brodsky led the class in a recipe utilizing those ingredients over Zoom. And we are really excited to do the same thing with you all. We see some familiar faces and some new faces. So we're excited to get to do some virtual cooking tonight. So a few Zoom norms. So I appreciate everyone keeping your mic on mute um, for the time being. If you have any questions, please feel free to direct them to the chat. Um, and I also sent the recipe ahead of time in both English and Spanish. So you can reference that as you wish. Um, and then once we get to the cooking, um, we feel free to turn on your video, keep yourself on mute, but turn on your video. We'd love to see you cooking along with us. And tonight you can always tag us on social media. You can use the hashtag DNight or hashtag we are DPS. And then please give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter. We've got uh, DPS Hub Farm has an Instagram and Twitter, Culinary has it, and Durham Public Schools as well. All right, so this evening we are going to make strawberry shortcake as a celebration of spring. So strawberries are just beginning to ripen on the plants at the Hub Farm, and soon you will be able to go strawberry picking at farms all across Durham. So a little bit about strawberries. Strawberries are native to North and South America. The modern strawberry is preceded by the wild, uncultivated strawberry, which has been eaten around the world by indigenous people since ancient times. Strawberries were especially important to American Indian tribes living in the eastern regions of the present day United States. The month of, noon, of June sorry, was known to many tribes as the strawberry moon, as it was the month when most strawberries began to ripen. Strawberries are a great source of vitamin C, and are great for cleaning your teeth and stimulating your appetite. Um, strawberries were not cultivated on a large scale until the 17th century, when two American varieties created a larger berry than the small wild strawberry. English gardeners also cultivated nearly 30 varieties of strawberries. In 2010, strawberries surpassed apples to become third among fruits in their economic contribution to agriculture in the US which is just after grapes and oranges. So that covers strawberries. 
What about shortcake? What is shortcake? So shortcake is a European invention, and it first appeared in cookbooks in the late 1500s. Technically, a shortcake is a heavy biscuit. The short refers to the addition of a large amount of fat or shortening to flour, which results in a crumbly or short texture. Although today shortcakes are usually made from biscuits or sponge cakes like we are making tonight, earlier American recipes used pie crust or broken up pie crust pieces. And it wasn't until 1910 that French pastry chefs actually replaced the sugary topping with a heavy whipped cream, which is what we use still today. And it's the main way we eat strawberry shortcake in the South. So I'm going to pass it on to Chef Brodsky tonight to lead us in making strawberry shortcake. And I encourage everyone to try making it in biscuit form after trying it in cake form tonight. After all, you can never have too much strawberry shortcake. Awesome, thank you so much, Hannah. Um, so yeah, this is a really, really fun one. Um, it's it's great to see you all. And, and let me just say, um, before we really get into the cooking here, um, thank you all so much for being part of these family cooking nights. This is definitely uh, the best thing that has come out of this year, getting to see all of your faces and, and do all of this cooking with people that are, that are excited about it and having fun with it. So really great that you guys could all be here. Um, so tonight we're doing strawberry shortcake. And the first thing I wanna say about shortcake is that the cake is not the star of the show, the strawberries are. Um, so we're really lucky here in North Carolina. We've got this big, long strawberry season. Um, my daughter, Dara, who's gonna pop on the screen right now, she went out and picked these strawberries today um, from, what was the name of the farm? Eno River Farm. Eno River Farm, Lion Farm, we'll have some soon. Um, if you get down to the Durham Farmer's Market in the next few weeks, you will see strawberries all over the place. Uh, they're wonderful, they're great, and uh, they're good to have. So, I, we're gonna talk about those in just a second. So while Dara washes these strawberries with nice cold water, I just wanna point out that even in my fridge, I've got a couple of strawberries uh, left over from my last basket that are a little sad and ugly. If you've got sad, ugly strawberries, they're fine for strawberry shortcake. Just don't use the moldy ones. So Dara's gonna wash all these strawberries in nice cold water. And then while she is slicing, I'm gonna start talking to you guys about making the cake. So you'll see if you look at our recipe uh, that there are three parts. There's our cake, there's our strawberries, and there's our whipped cream. Uh, so for our strawberries, all we need is a couple of quarts of strawberries and a little bit of granulated sugar. Uh, so I've got the sugar right here in a bowl ready to go. And Dara's job while we start making the cake is going to be to carefully cut the green end off of these strawberries, slice them into nice fat pieces, and toss them in the sugar. Uh, it doesn't have to be slices. You can cut them in quarters. You can cut them in chunks. Uh, it really depends on the aesthetic you want. Um, I will say this. Remember to take as you're cutting, take a couple of pretty ones and leave them to the side because we can use those later for, for garnish. So as Dara starts cutting, I will start caking. Um, so our cake is very, very straightforward. And you'll see from the recipe, this relatively small batch. Um, we use two ounces of butter, two thirds of a cup of sugar, a cup and a half of flour and half a cup of milk. So we're not making a huge cake. Remember, the, the star of the show is the strawberries. I want a little bit of cake and a pile of, a pile of berries and whipped cream. That's, that's just me. So if you want to make a double batch, feel free to make a double batch. So we're going to do two batches side by side. The first one I'll do in the mixer, and the second one I'll do by hand, just so we can see that you don't really need any tools to make this at all. It's all about the steps. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to cream together our butter and our sugar. Um, again, it's a quarter cup of butter, which is two ounces for you guys out there keeping score, which is half a stick. So half a stick of butter, two thirds of a cup of sugar into the mixer it goes and we're going to cream it. So when you're creaming butter and sugar together, 
what you want to do. You want to use the paddle attachment in the mixer and you really want to beat the butter into the sugar. It starts to break up those sugar crystals. So it'll get light and fluffy, it incorporates a little bit of air, which is actually going to help our batter rise. The baking powder will help it rise more. So don't be afraid to really beat it. Get it nice and creamy and fluffy. Let that keep going for just a sec. Uh, the next thing we need to add is our egg and our vanilla. Now, it's very tempting to just crack this egg right over the bowl and drop our egg in, but that often results in eggshells in our cake mix. So don't be shy about cracking your egg into a dish and then pouring it in. All right, great way to prevent getting eggshells into your cake batter. After that, we need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Throw it away. Sorry, I just brought up a great point. She got to an ugly strawberry. If you buy a lot of strawberries, they're pretty cheap. Some of them are going to be ugly. Throw them away. It's okay. They won't. They won't hurt their feelings. So now we've got our butter creamed with our sugar. We've got our vanilla and our egg. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to start alternating our dry and wet ingredients into this to make our batter. Uh, so for our dry ingredients, we've got one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, but I think our recipe says two. It does, it says two teaspoons of baking powder in the recipe. Two teaspoons of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. This is why you double check your recipe, folks. Can the butter be cold when you're creaming it? The butter can be cold when you're creaming it. The more you temper your butter, the easier it is to cream, especially if you're doing it by hand. So if you're using a mixer, you put cold butter in the mixer, for the first couple of minutes that it's mixing, the butter will kind of break and crack apart into large pieces. And then the friction from the mixer will actually warm it up for you. So absolutely fine to start with cold butter in a mixer. If you are going by hand, you absolutely want to let that butter come up to room temperature. And Brodsky, one question. Should everyone have preheated their ovens to 350? Oh my goodness gracious. You know, it's like I've never done this before. Thank you so much. Yes, everyone preheat your ovens to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so back to where we were. We had our butter creamed with our sugar, our eggs, and our vanilla. We're going to start alternating in our wet and our dry ingredients. So it is just like it sounds. Add about a third of your dry and pour in a bit of your milk. A little bit more of your dry and a little bit more of your milk. You'll notice that I've got the speed set very low. If you do this at full speed, you tend to get blasted in the face with quite a bit of flour. So keep the speed low until you have all of your ingredients incorporated. Once we have all our ingredients incorporated, I'll bring the speed back up. just to get a nice, light, fluffy batter. And that's it. That really is all it takes to get this batter made. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. I'll give you a, kind of an eye for the texture of it. To 
This is when all of you parents that are nicer than me hand this beater off to your children and let them let them lick it. Not me though. Scrape off every bit, and then I lick it myself. No, it's okay. All right, so that's already having this short batch number one is done, and you can see we've got we got a pretty tight batter. Um, this is great for a shortcake. And if you taste this batter, you'll notice that it's sweet, but it's not sickeningly sweet. It really should be just a platform that the strawberries sit on, right? So we want it to be basic. We don't want it to be uh, overly sweet, overly rich. We just want uh, effectively a plate to put all our strawberry whipped cream goodness on. So that's batch number one. We'll see how we're doing on strawberries over here. I think the worm started to bite into this. Throw it in the sink. If a worm started to bite into your strawberry, throw that one in the sink too. Looking good there, buddy. So in this moment in between these batches, I'm gonna to talk to you very quickly about these strawberries. You'll see that the strawberries Dara has started to slice here are absorbing that sugar, which is great. And what's gonna happen through this magical process called osmosis is that water is gonna be pulled out of the berries. And by the time Dara is done slicing, we won't see any sugar in here. We'll have a nice strawberry syrup. All right, so let's do our second batch by hand. And, uh, you know, by hand can mean a couple different things. We could use a hand mixer for this. Um, I, myself, think I'm just going to use a wooden spoon today. So what we want to do to make a batch of this by hand, we want to first start by breaking our butter up into pieces in our sugar. And this part is much more difficult than it is with a mixer. I'm not gonna lie, they made mixers for a reason. They make things much easier, but it can be done. So as you break this butter up into your sugar, you wanna be trying to just cream those together, just mimic the operation of the mixer. You will never get it as smooth or as light and fluffy as you can in a mixer, but that's okay. All you need is your butter evenly distributed. You just don't want to have any huge chunks in your bag. So once you find that you have the butter in the, in the smallest pieces or the smoothest mixture that you can get, then we can go through the exact same process. We'll add our eggs and our vanilla, and then followed by alternating our dry and wet ingredients. And then we'll be ready to bake. I saw. We got lots of folks out there. Everybody's going to have the same dessert tonight. Everyone across all of Durham Public Schools will have strawberry shortcake. Except like the five people that this. Hey, Brodsky, do we need to grease the cake pan? Uh, we'll do that right when we get ready to go into the oven. Uh, but for those of you that are ready to go into the oven, let me take a moment and talk about that so I don't slow you down. I don't want anyone waiting for me. Um, <laughs> cake pans. Uh, we got a lot of varieties, right? We've got round cake pans. We've got square cake pans. Uh, we've got cupcake tins, right? And we can make this in any of those. Uh, what I like to do for this type of cake is I like to take a piece of paper and just line the bottom of the pan. Um, I find that that's just a really easy way to ensure that a cake releases from the pan. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to go corner to corner. One piece of paper across the bottom of the pan. And then what I'll do is I will grease that paper and the edges of the pan. 
And you can do that in a couple of ways. You can do that with uh, a stick of butter, which I had handy, right? So you can take a piece of butter and you can just rub the edges. Right. Uh, in order to not mess up your stick of butter, my mom used to give me a, a little pat of butter in a paper towel, right? And I'd use that to rub the edges. Even easier, a little can of Pam or vegetable oil spray will work. And it doesn't take much. Just a little coating across the paper and the edges of the pan. And then you want to transfer your batter into it. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get this one into the oven. This will be our big one. We'll get this one into our oven. And then we'll do the other one in cupcake tins. Yes, my dear. I was just about to ask you if we could do the other one. Yeah, we'll do the other one with cupcake toes. So if you've got a rubber spatula like this, really, really great for this part of the process. You can get just about all the batter out of the bowl. Make sure you scrape it. Helps if you've had a French chef yelling at you for a few years about not wasting their food, but you can scrape your bowls pretty clean with a rubber spatula. All right, so now we wanna make sure that we get our batter spread all the way to the edge of the pan. In the first few moments in the oven, as it warms up, it will spread itself out a little bit. Try to get it as close as you can to the edge. And then just drop your pan a few times. That'll help set. All right, I'll take this one, I'll pop it in the oven. And through the magic of television making, I'll pull this one out of the oven. Ooh la la, ready to go. All right, so we've got our first one in the oven. Uh, we've got our butter and our sugar creamed on this handmade batch. So we're gonna go ahead and add our egg. Same thing, I'll crack the egg into a dish just to make sure I don't accidentally get any shell in there. I'll add my teaspoon of vanilla. Dark, could you take all those tops you've got so far and put them in the compost? And while I'm mixing this up, one last piece of critical strawberry trivia that I did not hear Hannah mention. If I'm not mistaken, strawberries are the only fruit in the world with the seeds on the outside. Way to go, strawberries. Way to have a special thing. Right, I did not mention that. Great fact. That's a great one. I think that one came from a Snapple cap. Uh, so once, if you're making this by hand, once you've added your egg and vanilla, you'll start to see that you get a very, very smooth taste, which is exactly what you want. And now we can go through the exact same steps. We'll measure out our milk. And we will alternate our wet and dry ingredients. Don't forget your quarter teaspoon of salt and your two teaspoons of baking powder. And just exactly the same with the mixer. When you're incorporating ingredients, start out slow so you don't end up with a face full of flour. How's our timing? Are you gonna finish with strawberries the exact same time I finished with batter? Yeah, we're pretty, getting pretty close. It's almost like we planned it that way. So Dar is just about finished with strawberries. I'm just about finished with batter. And the last thing we'll need to do together is make a batch of whipped cream. The most physically demanding job in the professional kitchen.
Again, we're just bringing this together. A little bit of dry, a little bit of wet. I might finish before you. I don't think you're gonna finish before me. I'm pretty close. Finished. Ah, you haven't cleaned up your stuff yet. Yeah. Brodsky, a question yeah. for you. Yes. Um, how do we add the milk into the dough or into the batter? So what I do is I alternate between adding about a third of the milk and a third of my dry mixture, which is my flour, baking powder, and salt. So just gently pour in a little bit of your milk and a little bit of flour, stir to combine. A little bit of milk, a little bit of flour, stir to combine. And our hand batch is done here. Looking pretty good. Dar, would you like to taste for quality control? Does it taste like poison? No. No? Then we did okay. All right. But who knows? You can never tell if it tastes like poison. Will not be morbid. All right. So at this point, we've got our strawberries sliced and dressed in our sugar. And you guys can see there's no, no sugar left on these. Now they're just shiny glazed with this nice, all the juice that's come out of those strawberries. It's really, really nice. Um, little secret ingredient here. A very tiny pinch of salt in your strawberries. Uh, really brings out the flavor and helps that sugar extract a little bit more moisture out of your berries. So we're in great shape here. We'll pick up a couple of these things and then we'll start portioning and making with cream. Uh, so this last batch here, I want to make sure that I have these ready for dessert. I don't have 35 minutes to wait for these to bake. I'm going to be hungry right away. So what we're going to do is these ones will actually just cook in these cupcake tins or muffin tins. Really, really simple. It'll cut our cooking time down to uh, less than 20 minutes. And they'll cool a little faster. So Dar, rock, paper, scissor for whipped cream. You want to do whipped cream or muffins? Whipped cream. You want to do whipped cream? You, never mind, you can take it. <laughs> I might need a little cup of this. Okay. So while I am portioning out these cupcakes, Dar is going to start making our whipped cream. This is really, really very, very easy. All we need to do to make whipped cream is take a little bit of heavy cream, a little bit of sugar, and add a whole lot of air. Hey, Chef Brodsky, we got a question about the cake batter being super sticky. Is that the right texture? Uh, it is a relatively sticky batter. If you feel like it's too stiff to spread across the bottom of your cake pan, you can add about uh, two tablespoons more milk and it'll loosen it up just a little bit. It'll behave exactly the same way. Uh, where did I put my measurement? All right, so for our whipped cream, we've got two cups of heavy cream, about half a cup of powdered sugar. You can use granulated sugar for this. It won't be, it won't be grainy. All the grains will break down. The only reason I use powdered sugar, powdered sugar has got a little bit of cornstarch and it helps our whipped cream hold its bubbles for a little bit longer. So all Dara needs to do here is stir this and she will continue to stir this with a whisk until she can turn the bowl upside down above her head and nothing will come out. That's always our measurement. Uh, the larger your whisk, the faster this goes because a larger whisk will incorporate more air into the cream. Uh, my ratio for heavy cream to sugar is two cups of heavy cream to half a cup of sugar. Uh, I would tell you that you, most of you can do the whipped cream in the mixer except for the Spencer family. The Spencer family must make the whipped cream by hand and is now officially racing Dara. Who 
so we're racing now. You are racing Miss Spencer. Don't worry. I'm like 90% sure you're going to win. She's very slow. <laughs> All right. So while Dara is making our whipped cream, I'm going to keep portioning out these shortcake cupcakes for us. What if my arm gets tired? If your arm gets tired, you're using too much of your muscles. Remember? Just let the motion of the bowl carry the whisk in a circle. It's not going to fight back. You don't have to push hard. Alright, and no matter what dish you are using, if you're using a cake pan, if you're using a, a brownie, a brownie pan that you have, if you're using a cupcake pan, just remember that this batter will rise about 50%. So if it's an inch tall, when it comes out of the oven, it'll be an inch and a half tall. So make sure you don't fill it up all the way to the top, otherwise you'll get a little bit of overflow. Would you believe that? I'm only gonna get 11 cupcakes. Only 11? Only 11. How can you live on this earth? How can I live on this earth? All right. We'll take these, we'll go ahead and pop these ones in the oven. If we can make room. Again, just remember that I made two batches. So one batch will fit in a, a nine inch pan just like this. And this is the one that I made earlier. So we could talk about serving and decorating. All right, do we have other questions out there now before we start in on cutting this thing up and putting it on some plates or into some glasses? Looking good out there, Mrs. Henderson. That's okay, we've got the whole container from Mimi for decorating. All right, so we got this cake uh, that came out of the oven oh, about an hour ago, so it's nice, it's cooled down very nicely. Uh, make sure you get that round of paper out of the bottom, throw that in the trash. And as we finish up our whipped cream, we can start to talk about uh, getting this on a plate, making it look nice. I've got some funky choices for us today. I've got some, some interesting 1970s strawberry colored glassware here that I always like for strawberry things. I've got some funny plates. Oh yes, that will do nicely. That will do very nicely. Dara, do you happen to remember which plant in the garden I told you was mint? No. Okay, I'll find it. I think it's in the corner. Oh, I know where it is. Oh. Hey, Brodsky, any tips if um, if your whipped cream is still liquid after stirring it for a while? Keep Sometimes going. Uh, if, if, if you are stirring and stirring and stirring, and it just looks like it's a little bit frothy, it actually means you're almost there. Look, it's up there. No, I I saw it Another strategy that I've used before is putting whipped cream and sugar in a jar with a lid, like a screw on lid and shaking it that way. That's another, yeah. another way to do it. That is a great method. Thank you, Hannah. Um, also take turns because you will get tired. Um, and, and this is something where 
it really, it really is just how many times you've done in your life. If you, uh, if you spend a lot of time whisking, you stop moving your whole arm and you just kind of do everything with your wrist and it makes it much less exhausting. But you should be making some noise. You should be, you should be splashing just a little bit. The cream should be riding up the edge of the bowl. Oh, it rode too far. And when you start to see little lines in the cream, we call those ribbons. And it means you're getting very, very close. Guys, on this, Brodsky. <laughs> did, did the Spencers win? We won, but we, we cheated. We did it with the machine. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Yes, and obviously the fastest way to do it is to use your mixer. But many of us made our mixer bowl dirty, making our batter. So we'd have to clean it and then dry it and then put it back. So I like to make this by hand. If you ever want to exhaust two young children, give both of them a bowl and a whisk and some heavy cream. And tell them that the first one to hold it upside down over their head without spilling wins. And you will either get two very ch tired children or two children ready for a shower. All right, it's your turn. All right, so I'm going to do a couple of a couple of different things with this. Um, we could decorate this whole, but it will get very soggy because we got a lot of juice on our strawberries. So this is something that I really like to decorate on the plate. And there's a million ways to do it. You all are the artists, right? I'm just I'm just giving you the canvas. So we take a piece. We can cut it open. We can layer it with strawberries, right? And don't worry about making a mess. Get some of that juice in there. Let them overflow. Let them fall off the edge. And then when we have whipped cream, we'll put a pile of that and we'll make a top. We're so close. Keep going. Another thing we can do. So this one I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve in a glass because everyone thinks food is fancy when it's served in a glass. So, some strawberries at the bottom. Oh, great question. How do you store the whipped cream after you make it? That is a great question. Uh, let me show you. The ever useful, ever famous wonton soup container is the greatest whipped cream storage vessel in the history of humanity. Uh, if you don't have that, any Tupperware will work. You can wrap it up in the bowl that you made it in. Just make sure that you take the whisk out first. Want me to finish it? Yes. You're so close. I'm going to tip it over your head. Oh, come on. I'll show this to you guys. We've, we're still liquid. Uh, it's, we've got a lot of light in here. Um, we're still liquid. But we're starting to get a little bit thicker. We're starting to see some ribbons and we're very close to what's called soft peaks. So a soft peak, it's like a Dairy Queen. When you lift it, it'll fall back over. No, it's okay. It's just the camera does not do well with white things and the whipped cream is very white. Hey, Brodsky, how much did you fill muffin tins if you're using muffin tins for your uh, batter? I did about two thirds of the way. When I meant to sprinkle them with some extra sugar and I forgot. Uh, so now we're at, we're in a medium peak where our whipped cream will kind of, 
it will stand, but it's very soft. And this I think is, this I think is the perfect level of whipped for whipped cream. Also, this is a very plain whipped cream. This is just sweetened cream. If you want to elevate this, if you want to, you want to personalize this, um, hit it with a, a little tiny dash of vanilla extract, even some almond extract, which is one of my favorites. And just give that whipped cream a little bit more, a little bit more depth, a little bit more complexity. Would you hand me a large spoon? Okay. Why, thank you. Should I go ahead and... Oh yeah, here, hold this over your head. Okay, turn it back. It's only medium, it's only medium, turn it back. Oh my God, all right. Well. <laughs> You said it was. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't that confident. All right. So we've got some cake. We've got some cream. We've got some berries. Might as well throw more berries on there, right? We really want to saturate the cake. Shut off the spoon. And a little more whipped cream on top. And that'll do it. Nobody's nobody's gonna be unhappy about getting that. A quick little garnish I can show you all. Make a just a little strawberry fan for the top. And take a strawberry that has nice looking leaves. And you cut it in half. And this is this is kind of precise, so I hope you can see it. Not not tough to do though. Kind of angle your knife a little bit and just slice into the strawberry, but not all the way through it. And then if you push down on it, the strawberry will kind of open up into this little fan shape. We'll put that right on top. It'll look great. Hmm. Can I do that? Yes, here, do this one. All right, so that's one adult size portion. That'll do. Um, I've got my glass here still. I've got my strawberries at the bottom, my shortcake, some whipped cream, some strawberries, another round of cake, another round of cream. Okay. And now we got a strawberry shortcake parfait. Easy peasy. Beautiful. Can I use it as garnish for this one? Uh, don't be afraid to use this syrup that has come out of your strawberries, right? And pour that right over the top. It's beautiful. It is wonderful. It is an insulin shot waiting to happen. All right. Uh, quality control. Two bites and save the rest up for after dinner. Before you eat it, can we see it close up? Can you hold it up close up to the camera? I can. Wow. So that's our that's our little parfait. That's right, very nice. Beautiful. These ones are a little more straightforward. Um, and what's great about this is, you know, it doesn't have to be. Um, Beautiful, it can be rustic, it can be kind of sloppy on the plate. It's going to be sloppy when they eat it. Um, what this should really be is just, like I said, a, a celebration of these strawberries because they're great and we're really lucky that here in North Carolina, we can go out and we can pick them uh, at places like the Hub Farm. Yeah. All right, which one do you want, the cup or the plate? Mm. Yeah, that was a smart, that was smart. A very smart young lady here. So I'm gonna have Dara here assemble one more of these and I'm actually gonna run out to the garden. I'm gonna find a little bit of fresh mint that we can use for another garnish. What do you think? Can you make two more of the glass ones for me and mom? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. What about this one? Uh, one of them's for Evelyn. But here, make a tiny one for your baby sister. 
All right, make three. That way, if somebody shows up after dinner, we've got dessert for them. I don't think anyone will do that, but okay. Uh, yes, be very, very careful about starting to eat your strawberries that are coated in sugar because you will not stop. Oh man, they're so good. And I can't begin to tell you all the difference between a strawberry now during strawberry season and those strawberries that you see at the grocery store in December or January that kind of are a little a little spongy and a little oh just a little too red um right now when the strawberry when you can go and get a strawberry right off the vine um they really are something very special i'll say on the note of strawberries and strawberry farmers we're having a late season frost tonight if, any, if anyone's seen the weather it's getting down to below freezing tonight and tomorrow night so a lot of our strawberry farmers have their fingers crossed that their crop makes it through tonight and tomorrow because there's lots of berries on those plants. So let's all just cross our fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> there we go, we got a little sprig of mint. And then Hannah, I think, you know, on our end, we're, we're about done. So let's, let's see everybody out there cooking. I'd love to see how everybody's doing. If some of you have started putting this stuff on plates, I know I was a little ahead because I pre-baked a cake, um, but let's see how you all are doing. Yeah, we've gotten a few questions about um, how long should we let the cake cool before plating it and eating it and all that good stuff. Well, so that's going to depend on a couple of things. And I'm sorry, we did not talk about, we didn't talk about cooling and testing our cakes yet. That's the next thing we have to talk about. So for, forgive me. So first to test our cakes, to make sure these are done. What you're going to want to do when your timer goes off after 30 to 35 minutes or about 20 minutes, if you're doing cupcakes, you don't want to take a toothpick uh, some, or a, a cake tester, and you just want to insert it right into the middle. And if it comes out clean and dry, that means your cake is done, All right? So when you take your cake out of the oven, if you want to cool it down very quickly, let's move it away from the oven. If you have one of these cooling racks, you can take the cake in the pan, right in the pan and set it on top of the cooling rack that's gonna let some air get under it and it's gonna cool it down faster. A really a small, thin cake like this. You okay? Yeah. I thought you cut yourself. No. A small, thin cake like this will cool down in about 15 or 20 minutes. I know, I know that waiting for it to cool is the hardest part, I get it. Um, but if you have all of these things put together, if you've got your strawberries and your whipped cream and your cake, remember that you can walk away you can finish dinner you can clean up the dishes and come back when, it, when, you're, when you're set and ready and, and plate it up and eat it. Um, Krisha. I feel that I'm like a deep emotional level. I have been there. I have eaten all my strawberries before my cake is ready. So now you know for next time, if you want this on a Friday, you gotta bake this cake on a Thursday, right? And the great part is no one will eat this cake in advance because without the strawberries and whipped cream, this, this cake isn't worth its weight in sugar. All right, let's see who else has questions out there. Oh yes, you can absolutely take breaks during making the whipped cream. It is exhausting unless you cheat like some folks out there. What if this looks weird and like bubbly and grainy? 
Uh, what looks weird and bubbly and grainy? Your whipped cream? Yes. Can I see it? Bubbly is good because you're adding bubbles. Let me see. Ooh, it's perfect. It's done. You might have gone too far, which is okay. That was my mom. She's the one who told me to keep mixing it. Mm -hmm. I said we should stop because we could over mix it. And she said, just keep going. So this, this magical thing happens when you're making whipped cream. If you keep mixing, it'll start to get stiff. And then if you keep mixing, it'll get even stiffer. And then if you keep mixing after that, what it will happen is it will turn into butter. That's where butter comes from. But instead of sugar, they add salt. Um, but that's okay because you probably didn't make it all the way to butter. You probably have just very, very stiff whipped cream. How's it going? Um, uh, how, do you, how do you use the mint? How do I use the mint? So the mint is this very magical thing called a garnish. All right. And in restaurants, what we do is we take a garnish, which is something pretty, and we add it to the food. And do you know what that lets us do? It lets us charge you more money. That's its whole job. So what I do here is I take this one and this one, it's looking pretty good. It's got strawberries. I think I see some cake in there. There might be some whipped cream. It's okay, but it's not beautiful. So what I'll do is I'll take some of this mint, which smells good, it tastes good, and I'll just stick it in the top. And now we have made it fancy. Ooh la la. That's the only job for the mint. Um, so how to decorate. You can decorate this however you want. Um, so remember that food is art. Uh, if you want to serve a triangle of this with a few pieces of strawberry on a plate with some whipped cream, it's okay, that's perfect, it's gonna be beautiful. If you wanna make modern art and take these pieces of cake and crumble them and break them and then draw your name onto the plate with strawberry syrup and then stand as many pieces of strawberry up as you can to make a tower, you could do that too doesn't matter how it looks. If you think it's pretty, then it's pretty. You need two more garnishes. Why don't you take this mint as a guide and go outside and find more mint. Hey, smell it. Taste it. Okay. All right, I'm going to go to gallery view here. Let's see what's happening out there. I see some pretty happy campers. I see a lot of people eating strawberries. Oh, Miss Spencer, that's a nice looking cake. It looks like a glob of Play-Doh because I didn't make the dough wet enough. <laughs> that's okay. You can just blame me. Yes. <laughs> and remember, it doesn't matter how it looks when it comes out of the oven because you're going to cut it up into pieces. And it smells great. There we go. Ooh, the shankles out there. Hey, guys, that is a nice looking uh, shortcake cupcake. I love it. And the Hoffmans, it looks like we have, is that some mint? We made it. Looking awesome. Ooh, I think I see a heart-shaped cookie cutter coming out over there. Um, did you see my mom's wood cream? I didn't. Where is it? Look. Beautiful. Try 
trying to, I'm trying to find the person talking. Oh, it looks great, y'all. We are awesome. Ooh, I, I see one that's being decorated as a whole cake that looks beautiful. These are great. See, Damien, Damien has a beautiful one. I saw Damien's in the glass. That looks awesome, Damien. Thank you. Well, here, you know what? Let's let's switch cameras so you, so everybody can see you and you can see everybody. Here you go. Let's see, Tiffany, that is very, very nice. It's not all misshapen like uh, like some chorus teachers I know. That is beautiful. Hey, hey it's your fault, right? <laughs> yes, yes, still my fault. Let's see. Oh, the Lomos made a double batch. That looks awesome. Okay. Brodsky, I can't figure out how to show you my my cake because I can't figure out how to change my virtual background because this is Felipe's see. iPad. I but see. I promise it's in the oven and my timer just went off and I wanted to eat it raw for being honest. It tasted so good. Uh, that's awesome. I see that you have a very eventful virtual background. <laughs> um, try switching cameras. Yeah, when I did that, now it now I just see Dragon Ball Z completely. <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> But I also, I'll send a picture or take a picture and send to you. Thank yes, you everybody, please do, you know, take pictures, send them to uh, send them to the hub farm, uh, send them to the culinary Twitter. Um, we, we would love to see them. We'd love to share in this with all of you. And for those of you still uh, pulling cakes out of the oven, I just took my cupcakes and my cakes out. And if I can find my tester, I'll test them with you. So got a nice light golden brown color on our square. And we'll just kind of angle the tester into the middle. As long as it comes out clean and dry, we are in business. So a triple batch over at our house. We are going to be eating strawberry shortcake for days. And these look great. Let's okay, see. look, look, I got it. Let me see. Ooh, look at that. And it came out clean. I didn't have to put it back in. I was surprised. Our oven's kind of hot, though. But. Yes, so, uh, you know, word of warning to everyone. I, I should always say this at the beginning. You know, everyone's oven has a different opinion about exactly where 350 degrees. So, yeah. trust, trust yourself more than you trust your timers. Hi, Sabrina. How are you? Great. Um, I would say I'm going to call you. Call you we made a cake. I'm going to call you. Yeah. Yes. Four minutes. I think it'll be done. I think it'll be done. Okay. Who's mine? It's good. Hi. Hi. Look, mine. Oh, beautiful. Yes. I make two. You made two and stacked them together? Yes. Very wow. yeah. All right. I make a big one and I make hot. We're thinking about making your pop design with these clear glass. That's going to be awesome. That's, that's going to look beautiful. Will you make sure you take a picture, Heather? <laughs> hey, Alexandra, how are you guys doing? How did yours come out? <laughs> I see. Ooh, I know. Uh, ooh, I love those down in the corner, uh, Jamila and Julie. That looks beautiful. Something. Yeah, it's as beautiful as that. These are awesome. See, he's beautiful. These are awesome. <laughs> Way to, way to go, gang. Um, and I will say, you know, this is our last one of these we have scheduled for this year. Um, but regardless of what happens in the 2021-22 school year, um, this is something that we've really loved doing. And I hope we can keep it going. I hope we can keep it happening um, forever. Because this is, this is great. And it's just so great to see everybody out there cooking. 
I totally agree. I've really enjoyed this and I love seeing all of your faces and all of your baking <laughs> skills. This is amazing. Well, to be in. Thank you guys so much. This was so much fun. We're going to let our cake cool down and then we're going to decorate. So we'll send a picture. Perfect. Thanks, Tiffany. We did, we did put it already so it could cool a little bit faster and we'll do layers. That's awesome. That looks great. Yay. Y'all have a good day. All right, well, listen. We are going to get the gang here fed some dinner and some, and then some dessert because we've got it on hand. And you should all do the same. Thank you all for coming. This is great. And we will see everybody soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You want to come say bye? Bye, Dara. Bye. Bye, Dara. Bye. 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 Bye.